All right. Hey, it's Matt. Long as you're right. So today we're back. Um, last time I was in the shop, I was working on that four liter sitting right over there. Different story. Um, we ran out of parts again. Seems to be a common occurrence right now. Actually, on that one, it's not really parts, it's tools. But uh, I need camshaft alignment tools. So we're waiting on parts. Um, that video will probably just come straight back into you. So we'll ignore that. So today, what we're doing is we're working on this right here. This is a 2002 LQ4 six liter LS motor, which we just got back from the machine shop. And as you can tell, we painted it. Um, when we got it back, it was black. Um, and I didn't have any high temp black paint, so I shot it with that. And I'll go through and clean up all the mating surfaces for our gaskets and stuff like that. That won't take that long, it's not a big deal. Um, I just wanna run through this one real quick. We're gonna get this motor put together. Uh, pretty quick uh, hopefully in this video it should just be all all in one bang 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 motors together and then at the end of the video it'd be done we'll see how that goes hopefully we got everything we need and uh, let's get to it all right and per the usual we'll start by blowing all the all the holes in the block out oil galleys everything so let's do it start with the mains Time to lay the crank. So let's grab him and install him. not heavy all right quick show and tell on what i was talking about remember i said that you use certain bolts on, when we was taking this motor apart look right here this bolt right here when you run it all the way in now watch turn the crank back this bolt out there it is so there's your problem right there so if you ever went to go to put one together and can't get it to rotate can't get something to happen that's the bolt that's the problem this guy here and this bolt's a very specific length, so be careful with it. All right, we're just gonna use some plastic gauge because the machine shop did all the checking, but this is more just a double check behind him. So we'll take a piece of plastic gauge, pull the crank around a little bit, set some plastic gauge out right here on the journal of the crank. Double check it's where you want it. And then we'll squeeze her down. Thrust main. Set her down. Make sure you set it the right direction because it is directional. Right, caps free. We'll flip her over. We'll check our clearance, which looks tight, so real tight. One five. So the one five is pretty good, and then the two o is obviously going to be too small. So there's your two o. So it's between one five and two o which is pretty good considering the factory bearing clearance, I think if I recall correctly, is, a, is like one six or one five. So, so we're between one five and two oh, let's put it back together. All right, I wanted to let you know, I did check the bearing clearance online just to be sure I was correct. And they show 10 to 25 thousandths from the factory is good. Mm, 10 is too tight for me, 25 would be all right. So I'm hell, I'm good with 15 to 20 on a plastic gauge set. All right, torque everybody 15 foot pounds, I've already started. All right, so now the right way to do this would be to break out a torque angle gauge. 
But what we're gonna do, since it's 80 and 50, we're gonna go hair under 90, a hair over 45. So here we go. All right, here we go. Hair under 90. There we go. Like I said, I know the right way to do it, but there we go. Every time you do it, every time you tighten two bolts up, grab the crankshaft, give her a rotation, make sure she moves. Outside's called for 50 degrees, so that's just a hair under 45, over 45. So here we go, 45, or just a hair more. 45, a hair more. Forty-five, just a hair more. Forty-five, just a hair more. All right, I'd like to take a quick brief intermission on the current project we're working on just to ask y'all to like, share, subscribe, and leave us a comment on the videos as uh, it helps the channel grow and lets me know what y'all like and don't like about the videos as well as when you leave a comment. I'm guaranteed to reply because I reply to every comment left in the videos. So there you go. Let's uh, now return to our current project. All right, cranks in. Everybody's torqued at 15 and then re and then re-angle torqued at roughly 80 and 50. Um, I do have a torque angle gauge. It's a cheap one. I don't like using these things. I can't read them real well. As long as it's in a spot that I can, you know, 45, 50 degrees, 90 degrees-ish, I'm gonna do it without it because <sighs> vision, simple. So cranks in, rolls good, there we are. Now let's put the rest of it together. All right, and next is piston rings. So we have rolled the block over as we should. And here we go. So we've got both rings set in. We put the top ring in first, bottom ring in second. And then what we'll do is we'll take this feeler gauge. This is a 17 thou feeler gauge because what you're looking for on this motor is a four inch bore, four inch times 0 .004 might be three zeros, can't remember offhand, is 16. So I have a 17 thou feeler gauge. As long as a 17 fits, I'm good with it. Street motor, there you go. Plenty of clearance. It's probably honestly like a 20. We'll check it in just a second. Check this other one real quick. Oh, where's she at? There she is. All right, so there's plenty of room there. Let's check another one. Let's check it with a an 18 or a 20. All right, so we've swapped to a 20. I think it's a 20. So let's see. Twenty fits nice, perfect actually. Same thing. Twenty fits perfect. Let's check this one. Uh, twenty fits per. Oh, twenty is just a hair tight. That's okay because of the goal here. Twenty fits. All right, now these two I only put the second ring in, so you'll be able to see, uh, the first ring in, so you'll be able to see a lot better. There you go, 20 fits, I mean, like, absolutely perfect right there. And then a 20 fits, absolutely perfect right there. So we know this side's good. Now, that's it. We'll call this good. And we'll start assembling pistons. All right, now it's time to put a piston in the hole and ring a piston. So on this one, the top ring is actually double directional. You can put it whatever way you want to. The second ring, however, does, go do does have a direction. Um, I already started bringing the pistons and forgot, honestly, to bring you on the camera. So we'll just do this one on camera. What I'd like to do with these is I'll find the gap in the ring tip, and I'll hang it above the wrist pin. I'll spin it 180 degrees. And I'll put this ring gap above the piston. So we'll set it right here, just like that. I mean, above the wrist pin, sorry. Set it right here. Just put your thumb on it. Just let it sit in the groove right there, see? All right, and he'll lift his tail, spinning the ring around the piston. All the way around. And then just pick the tail up, don't let it scratch down the side of the piston, and boom, piston's ringed. Now, it's time to, we already put bearings in, 
bearings are easy they just slide lock it right into place y'all have watched me do that a few times on the channel if you watch the channel if not there's plenty of video on that i promise so now I'll pull this cap off all right all right so now you take and put you a little assembly lube right here on the journal or on the bearing if it'll come out a little assembly lube like that and then we'll wipe that bearing straight across the face just like so i'm dripping stuff everywhere and then on the ls motor here we go so now there's a dot on the piston you'll see the dot right there he goes to the front and then we'll slide him down the bore um all the cylinder walls are already wiped down and the skirts are already wiped down with oil i'm just rechecking everything make sure everything's good we'll set him in just like that and we'll grab the ring squeezer set him in just like so push the rod up make sure it's at the high point there all right then we'll grab the ring squeezing pliers All right, ring squeezing pliers are grabbed. Everything's set. Now we'll just lay everything up and give her a good couple whops. There she is. She's installed. So now we'll go to the bottom and show you what we do down there. All right, we're going to be working right here off this very bike journal. Really easy to get to, really easy to see. So now I just got to find my little tapper hammer. He's laying up here, he is. And we're just going to tap this piston. Straight down here, just keep your hand on the rod to make sure that you don't beat up the crank on the way by. All right, there we go. We're seated. You check the bearing. And now we'll flip it over and plastic gauge everything. All right. Now it's time to do the plastic gauge on this baby. Just to double check everything that we've already checked. So we're going to check our work by using plastic gauge. And be sure that we did our work properly. So now you want to lay this plastic gauge right here. Just right there across the crankshaft. You can barely see it. It's right there. That's some thin, tiny stuff. And then we'll grab the rod cap. Make sure we install it the right direction. That's pretty key to this whole process. And then I'm sure somebody will grab because of the way I do this. But okay. Now we'll crack it back loose. check the clearance all right I don't know how good we'll be able to see this on camera but you'll see there's a mark right there on the 002 it's a hair smaller than the 002 so it tells we were right about two two and a half which is what we came up with on the uh, dial indicator all right so we checked that 22 i also checked it on the dial indicator a, while, a little bit too so we know we're good now what we're going to do is we're going to run in and just bump these things tight with the impact gun and we'll come back and torque the bottom end of it once everything's put together so bring you back in the near future all right well i got a little carried away it's late i'm getting tired went and ate dinner family showed up got in here and just started working and didn't turn the camera back on so here's where we're at now we got all the pistons in the motor got everything torqued up camshaft's in it moves freely like it's supposed to so now what we're going to do is we're going to put the oil pump timing chains guides blah 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 all that good stuff we're going to start putting it together right this second so most importantly for me when i do these motors is i buy new cam lock plates and the reason is this gasket right here so you don't want this gasket to be bad you won't have oil pressure if it's bad so now we'll install that. It comes with new bolts. There they are. And if you remember, I said 
don't forget to reuse these bolts. Every now and then the bolts will be longer and then they'll touch the crankshaft. Only one that actually matters is this one, but you know. So let's install this cam lock plate and time and chain set and all that good stuff. Let's do it. All right, so let's get these bolts out right here. Should be four of them. One, two, three. That means there's a fourth one still here. There he is. Four. We'll get this cam lock plate. Just steal a little bit of oil right here off this camshaft. And we'll wipe it right here around this rubber gasket right here. Make sure we're good. And then we'll set this block plate right there and just let it hang on the camshaft. And start putting our bolts back in. That's all it is. All right, well. I never realized that I didn't change the cam gear, or the crank gear. That's why I uh, shut the camera down. So now we swap the crank gear out. I was a pain in the balls. I didn't video that. I'm tired. I'm sorry. When I get tired, it's just I, li I lack in the video knowledge and want. So at this moment, now it's time to uh, do the camshaft. So I mean the timing. So let's set the timing. Now you'll see dot to dot. Straight, simple, sweet. We'll put some Loctite on these, hit them with the impact gun, and I'll hit them with a wrench just for sure, because they only get torqued in at like 22 foot pounds. But uh, that's it for this part, so bring it back in a second. All right, now a quick little trick for you for when installing the LS oil pumps. If you're installing them and on the motor right side up, it typically ain't too much of a problem. When you're installing it on the motor upside down, it only likes to move around and that thing likes to end up downstairs. So what I've learned is hold her at about a 45 degree angle, you know, something like that. And just go in here and kind of walk him around till the thing lines up. And once it lines up, straighten the pump up, slide her up, bolt her down. Now, before I do that, as I know we painted around everything in here, I just wanna make sure there's no paint gonna stop this baby from sealing. So I need to scrape that right there real quick. Full pump. pump installed so now pretty much everything else will fall together we're going to put the upper window straight back on i'm not going to video that at all get the old pump dipstick tube old pump tube back in i'll probably bring you in for that some of that just because and uh, we'll keep going all right well i don't even know if i mentioned this but when i take these old pump when i take these old pumps out of the box i pull them apart and i'll pack them full of vaseline that makes it pick up all nice but it also will make this old dipstick old dipstick tube this oil tube seal nice so we bought this as a kit from a milling kit. So let's see, see how easy it goes in. Should just fall right in. Well, maybe we need to pull this back one off and then set this front. All right, now let's see how easy it'll go in. Oh, look at that, it just fell right in, just like it's supposed to. Imagine that. Something actually doing what it's supposed to. All right, so now it requires one 10 millimeter which is a specific bolt. And then, I don't know, 10 of them little nuts. So let's put that together. And uh, that's probably the last most important thing for the bottom end of the motor. And then we can flip it over and do the rest. We'll go ahead and put the timing cover on too, I think. Bring it back in a minute. All right, so now it's time to do some lifters. So what we'll do, take the lifter out, stand the tray up just like so. Set our lifter in place. Lifter in place. Make sure they fit good and snug. Lifter in place. And the last one. Lifter in place. Hey, let's actually put this one in the right place. All right, so now, your lifter tray does its job, which this one's real nice actually, it's holding nice and tight. Push them all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, and you'll rotate them in to your lifter bores. If you do your job correctly, they all just fall in with the lifter tray. 
and there it is. If you don't do your job correctly, they fall out of the trays as you go to stick them in. That's me all I know. All right, and as we remember previously, I've already wiped everything down with brake clean, like I always do. But as we remember previously, the head gasket was on backwards. Well, look, you can see my water ports lined up, and there's no water port up here in the front. That's the correct direction. Now, here's our brand new fresh head. Let's install it. It should just roll right over. Just like that. We'll put our hand on it. Reach down and grab a couple bolts. After two bolts are in, it's over. Now, I'll bring you back in just a second, because I forgot to get all my tools ready. All right, so now we're just gonna pull all the bolts up, set the gun to minimal, no, minimal power. All right, so now we're gonna torque these heads on. 22 foot pounds. All right, first round of ninety is done. So let's do for go for a second here. Get these guys. Twenty-two foot bounce. Call it good enough. All right, I want you to see the gasket is correct. We got the cylinder head here in hand. Let's drop him on before that gasket decides to change its mind and no longer be in there in the, in the right position because it randomly does that sometimes. All right, now I'll torque all these head bolts and I'll bring y'all back in a bit. All right, and we're back. As you can tell, I've started Assembling everything, put new, put a fresh seal in the front seal, the rear seal, new timing cover gasket, new rear main seal gasket, and plate gasket. Um, I think we installed this last night. I don't remember, but whatever we haven't done, you can see we got it flipped upside down. We're doing the oil pan now. When doing the oil pan on these, for me, I leave the front timing cover just just a hair loose, and the rear main seal just a hair loose, and then we'll plop the oil pan on with this gasket and gentle him up, and then we'll pull these up because you want this to make sure to pull it into the oil pan if it doesn't it's going to leak or if you have this too high see like right now when i put the oil pan down see how this is too high it'll leak right there see how this is moves a little bit so that's why i always leave these loose until the oil pan's tight so let's do that all right we'll start with our brand new oil pan gasket Double check our seal area, our sealing location, make sure it's good and smooth and clean. Front, back, side to side, all that good stuff. Cause uh, yeah, you don't want no bumps or banks in there to cause it not to seal. Um, that one, uh, it'll be all right. All right, so now you'll take this guy and you'll see it's got the oil ports right here. They'll go right there to those oil ports over there. I don't know if y'all can see that or not for the angle you're at. And then it's time to install the oil, oil in the pan. All right, oil pan goes on just like so. Should just be nice and smooth and simple. Should be. Boop. There it is. We spent all day polishing on that joker. It was nasty, disgustingly nasty crap. 
All right, well, I'm gonna we'll clean these bolts because I for obviously forgot to. So, bring them back. All right, and we're back. So now I've already ran all these bolts up by hand, well, by drill. So you just kind of run them up till they touch. That's all they really need. Give them a little extra, pass touch. All right, well, now we got the motor rolled back over and we're cleaning push rods. I've already cleaned all the push rods, set them in place. Now what I do with these um, next is I'll come through and I'll put just a dab of oil right here on top of the rocker arm, or on top of the valve spring. Well, if my oiler wants to, my oiler not working. There we go. There we go. And now we know all those are ready to be used. So now we'll just take our little squirter and we'll squirt him straight down the push rod hole. Now you'll just put your little dot on each one, on the tops for the push rods. All right, so now everybody's ready, but but the last two, but the end two. So now what we need is the rocker arms. These have been soaking in cleaning solution. So when we do these, because they've been soaking in the cleaning stuff, we take them right here and I'll pump I'll push it all the way to one side. I'll put you a pump or two in here. There we go, till it's good and full. Rock him back and forth a couple times. All right, I'll roll him over. Do the same thing on this side, give her a pump or two. Till it rolls out the side. Uh, it's going all over the place. All right, and then we'll come on across the top. Boom, and boom, and boom, and boom. And then, rock him back and forth over the valley here. All right, got oil in all the bearings now. Then we'll set him in place on this one because we know he's ready and we'll do one we'll do a couple more real quick right real quick for you so squirt squirt that one's full rocking back and forth a couple times all right go to the other side squirt squirt there you go that one's full rocking back and forth a couple times all right then we'll go to the top and go squirt and squirt Hang him over because oil start dripping. Now you get oil in all the joints. Then we'll come to here. And now we can remove the, this one here. Out of my way. And this one here. I got oil on my hands, so it's making it hard to turn it. It'll be eight millimeter. Out of my way. And we'll prep those two. And then we'll just reassemble the rest of the rockers. So I'll bring it back in a minute. Oh yeah, forgot to mention, push rods. So you just drop the push rod straight down, make sure it sits in the cup, and you'll know because you'll be able to push it down. Listen, that one pushed down. Same thing with this one. Push them in, push them down. There it went. And then same thing we did on the last set. One, two, three, one pump. One, two, three, lift up, one pump. And then we'll oil the top of the valve right there. Oil the top of the valve right there. Now those are ready. So now we'll put all the other, we'll get all the other rockers oiled up. And uh, I guess that's basically it for this guy. I'll br probably bring you back once we're going to torque these babies down. I mean, I mean torque, I'll hit them with an impact gun, zap them down, call it good. All right, now real quick, we'll run these down and we will come back with a ratchet behind it, by the way. And what you'll see is the rocker arm will start twisting kind of sideways. Well, straighten itself up. See that? As it straight, once it straightens up, you know it's tight. There you go. Now they're all tight. Now we'll come back and hit them all with a ratchet just to be sure everything's where we want it. Now that side's done, we'll be able to cap this up. We'll go to that side and do it. And this motor's basically done. All right, 
Well, we're back. So the other night I was working on this game, building it, and Mr. Holloway and Chris showed up. So I stopped filming and working on it. As you can tell, at that point, I think all I had left to do was put the valve covers on, I think. Uh, either way, the valve covers are on, oil pan's on, timing cover's on. I gotta put the balancer on, that's all that we got left. Um, we got a brand new water temp sensor, crank and cam position sensor. And for the time being, I have this guy just screwed in the place, but we'll take it back out whenever he's he goes to put it in the truck. But this is what we was working on, just a quick peek. So not sure which video came, comes out first, but here's our uh, big block stroker. Yes, look at that right there. It was just painted, so trying to keep stuff off of it as much as possible. There's the transmission under it, a little dark under there, but you can see it shiny. So there she is. We'll let it, I'm gonna let that thing cure up for a few days. Um, like I said, the, I didn't put a bag on it until the next until the next morning. So or actually, I waited 24 hours. So I'll still have, a, I'll have to go through and kind of dust everything out of it. But that's a different story. So for now, this is where we're at. Um, I think I'm gonna call this one done because we've done the hard part. And uh, yeah, you know, if you can build an engine, you can surely put a balancer on it. Y'all have a good one.